It's only if you and I allow ourselves to be seduced by these spirits in departing from the true and living God that now we become the ones that are defeated. No longer victorious. Look at your neighbor and say, one can send a thousand to flight. And two can send 10,000 to flight. That's what happens when you walk with God. That's a covenant promise. Somebody said, praise the Lord. At the beginning of the year when we started the book of Deuteronomy, I told you to prepare to walk into the blessings of God. Did I not preach that to you? And how do we do that? By obeying Him. By being faithful to God. And God will bless your life. I was praying in the prayer room and I said, God, I said, begin to bless your people. So that the people in the world will see there's something different with you. Because I look at my life right now. And I look at your life right now. And they're not the same. And I said, God, let everybody see that you are a God that blesses your people when they walk with you in faithfulness, that you are their provider and their protector, hallelujah, and their deliverer, Lord God. Let there be a difference and a distinction be seen. Hallelujah. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight? Except the Lord has sold them and the Lord has shut them up. You see, now it's reverse. Now one enemy is chasing a thousand of God's people away. And two enemies are chasing ten thousand of God's people. Why? Because they're afraid. They're intimidated. They're full of fear. When you walk with God and I walk with God the way we're supposed to walk with Him, there's no fear. We don't, we don't fear the enemy. We don't fear sickness and disease. And that's not being brash. It's not being prideful. It's not being egotistical. It's declaring that God is faithful to you. He's faithful to the church. How many of y'all believe that tonight? How many of y'all seen, have seen the blessings of God in this hour that we live? What I've been trying to tell you is God's getting ready to use the church to be a light. It's your opportunity to minister to people. The glorious gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So sing the song. He said, for their rock is not our rock. Amen. Even our enemies themselves being judges, right? If you apply that to the enemies of God people, then the reason why that they were not victorious is because they were not faithful to God's covenant. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is a vine of Sodom. And of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and cruel venom of ass. See, God is saying, I'm right in judging my people. But I'm also right in judging the enemy. Because this is what they have in their life. Their life is like Sodom and Gomorrah. Their grapes are the grapes of gall. That's bitterness. Clusters of bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and cruel venom of asked. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time for the day of their calamity as at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. Amen. You see that end time prophecy? That's what's going to happen to those who do not walk faithfully to God. Whether you be the church or whether you be in the world. But if you walk with God, God has is, God is given you a promise to enter into the blessings of God this year. Amen. So now, having revealed to us the perfections of God, the imperfections of His people, now He talks about, and after talking about the, that He's right in His judgments upon His people and the people, the nations of the world, Now he comes and he talks about the gospel because he's not willing to end it with judgment. That's how good God is. That God wants to save his people. And he wants to defeat the powers of darkness and the kingdom of darkness. He, hallelujah, praise God. (laughs) 
You get time to read Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30. You'll see verse 36 is connected to that verse. It's a warning to the church to not apostatize away from God. Amen. To be faithful to Him. Do not allow yourself to be seduced. For the Lord shall judge His people and repent Himself for His servants when He seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. In Hebrews 10, He applies that to the church of people sleeping away from the gospel, slipping away from the Lord, that judgment would come. And then he says this, that he's going to come when he sees the power is gone and there is none shut up or left. He said, I don't want to leave it this way. He said, I want to make atonement. I want to save my people. I want my people to be delivered. I want my people to repent. I want my people to draw near to me. I want my people to return to the covenant and be faithful to me. Amen. And he shall say, where are their gods? There, are y'all with me? Their rock in whom they trusted. Where are these so-called gods that the nations worshipped or that Israel turned away from God to worship? Where are they? What have they done for you? How have they helped your life? Come on, somebody. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Look at the world, man. They've lost their mind. You know what God's doing? He's saying, you know what? To the whole world, you need to get your eyes on the one true God. Because your, your so-called gods that you've been worshiping, they're not helping you. How's it going with you? You that worship Buddha. How's it going? How's it going, America? The people that worship themselves or worship the dollar bill, worship money. Turn their back on God Almighty. How's it going? It's, God is saying, in His goodness, come to Him. Because these other little deities... Little divine spirit beings, they're not helping you. Praise God. See now that I am even, I am He, and there is no God with me. That's interesting. And he's talking about them worshiping these little gods. Now he said, There's no God with me. What he's saying, He's the only true God. Verse 17 They sacrifice unto devils, not to Eloah. That word God there, Eloah, means the singular, only one true God that there is. Amen. All of these others are so-called gods. Amen. Divine Spirit. He said, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. He said, I'm greater than they are. You know that's the truth. And as I come to a close, I will just share this with you. Over in Ethiopia, 74%, I didn't say 75, 74% of Ethiopian Christians have seen people who were demonized. And many a people in Ethiopia has come to the faith, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they saw those people, Delivered from those spirits. They have seen people that were mute. People that were deaf. When the spirit was cast out. The deaf could hear. And the mute could speak. And it was Jesus Christ. The one Eloah. That did it. And because of that. Ethiopians come to the gospel. Because they say. He's greater. He's greater. He's greater. He's sovereign. He's more powerful than any of these spirits. And all these spirits, whether they be good or evil, are going to bow down and worship Him in lower. Say praise the Lord. Clap your hands unto the Lord and shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. There's no God like your God. Praise God. Praise God. Woo. 
Thank you, Jesus. Mm. See, now that I'm even, I even, I am He, there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. And if I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with blood the slain, the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. See, that's the gospel. God is showing you. Now see, he can reverse it and bring judgment on his people. Or he can say, if you get on my side, you get on God's side. God says, I'll defeat your enemies for you. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. So verse 43, the last verse of this song. Rejoice ye nations. It's a declaration to the whole world. Rejoice ye nations with his people. For he will avenge the blood of his servants. And will render vengeance to his adversaries. And he will be merciful unto his land and to his people. God is saying to the world. It's time to celebrate the saving power (coughs) of Jesus Christ. (coughs) It is time to celebrate. Not only that he saves his people. But he defeats the adversaries, the powers of darkness. So I tell you today, this is not a time to be afraid. It's not a time to be seduced. It's time to rise up and sing a song. Because there's power in the song that you sing. And you are the song that you sing. If you sing the song of defeat and despair and unbelief, that's who you are. If you sing the song of Yahweh, the song of Jesus Christ, and declare victory to the world, that's who we are. In Jesus' mighty name, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's stand. Father, we thank you today. We stand in your house tonight as your house, worshiping you in spirit and in truth, Father God. We ask you to cleanse us with your blood. Purify our hearts. Forgive us of our murmuring and our complaining. Not grumbling against you, God. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. We yield to seducing spirits that pull us away from you. Lord, thank you for the victory that we have if we remain faithful to you and your covenant. And the promise that you've given to us. In Jesus' name. One last scripture I want to read to you by way of application. In Matthew 16, the Bible talks about an encounter that Jesus had with one of his disciples. Amen. And the Bible says, while they were at Caesarea Philippi, that's when the revelation that Jesus Christ was God. Amen. It was given right there at the foot of Mount Hermon. That's where Bashan is. That was supposed to be the headquarters of those fallen ones. And right there in that place, in Caesarea Philippi, Mount Hermon, Bashan, The revelation that Jesus Christ is God. And Jesus looked at Peter and he said, Flesh and blood had not revealed this unto you, Peter, but my Father which is in heaven. Because Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right there at the foot of the so-called mountain of the enemy. And after this takes place, the scripture tells us that Jesus began to tell them, Verse 21, to show unto his disciples how he, that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto 
Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of me. Now listen carefully. Jesus had already won the victory over the enemy in Luke chapter 4. When the enemy came to tempt him, he did not yield to the presentation of the enemy. And in that situation, the enemy came to him and asked him to bow down and worship him. The enemy offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the world without a cross. And now Peter begins to, start, start, uh, begin to speak to Jesus this same thing. A kingdom without a cross. A Messiah without a cross. And Jesus immediately recognized the same one that spoke to him in Luke 4. Is speaking again. And so he looks at Peter and he says, Get thee behind me, Satan. Because at that moment, this man of God who had a revelation that Jesus Christ was God at the foot of the false God's mountain, shortly after that, was being used by the enemy to speak. Be a Messiah without a cross. Let's have a kingdom without a cross. And Jesus recognized that voice that came to him through his disciple Peter as being Satan. And so he says, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. He looked at Peter. He recognized the voice that was coming out of him was the voice of the enemy. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. What does that mean? Get thee behind me. What he said to Peter in that moment, he said, Peter, get in your place of following me. Get thee behind me, Peter. Get thee behind me. Satan, get in your place and follow me. And that will mean, in some cases, the cross life. But when you lose your life for his sake, you gain it. Praise God. Let's get in our place. Church. America, Odessa, Midland, United States of America, the world. Let's get behind Jesus and follow Jesus, the one true God. Lord, we thank you tonight. Forgive us, Lord, at times we speak words we don't recognize and don't understand to be the voice of the enemy. And we get in our place tonight. And what Israel failed to do in the Old Testament, we sing the song again tonight so that we'll do what we're supposed to do in being faithful to you. We thank you, God, that you've given a promise to the nation of Israel today as well. That they would turn to you, the true and living God. That you would save both Jew and Gentile in you. And you will defeat the powers of darkness. We declare today that you are the one true Eloah. The one God, the true God. And we will remain faithful to you. And we refuse to allow seducing spirits to come and alter our reality. We understand today there is a, a time where two worlds are intersecting. The spirit and the physical. And we give you all glory and honor and praise. 
the Most High God. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've not yet been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost, now is the time. To get filled with the Spirit of God, to walk in the gifts of the Spirit, stay prayed up, faithful to the Lord, and watch God bless you. So that the people around you can say, I want to live for a God like that. Tell me who you serve. And we will gladly say, Jesus Christ is greater than any of these lesser Elohim. May the Lord bless you real good is my prayer. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.